All right, hello everyone. My name is Bobby Jones, also known as Mr. Brightside. I'm the host here at the Extra Mile Podcast, and I want to introduce you guys to our next guest for episode nine, which is my good friend and a uh, you know a close acquaintance in the business world. We're all involved in some entrepreneurial um, mastermind groups together and some networking groups together. And Doug Gallagher with On the Move Realty. And uh, a few other things. So I'm going to let you kind of explain what other things you're dabbling into these days. Um, so go ahead and tell the people exactly who you are, Doug. Hey, everybody. I'm Doug Gallagher. I uh, uh, Obviously, On The Move Realty is uh, my go-to. That's my number one. Um, secondarily, I've got um, Bay Country Property Management in the works. Uh, it's kind of my cash cow. I uh, keep things moving. And then I've got the acquisition side for buying and holding real estate and obviously investing. Nice. Awesome, man. So you're getting a few other things out there to create some some other revenue streams and things like that. But like what you're doing and what I really like about what you're doing is this all runs parallel to your current efforts. It's not like you went out, started um, uh, a football league and then started a restaurant. You know what I mean? Like you started, you're doing things that all run parallel to one another and complement each other. Um, so, um, let's talk about the, the property management part of it a little bit, like, and what prompted you to go ahead and pull the trigger to do that part of it and how that complements the other things that you got going on as well. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you know, when I came into real estate just about five years ago, um, I worked initially with a company, uh, locally that was very strong in property, property management. And, um, I really didn't care to do property management. Um, I, I didn't in, involve myself in the business side of it at all. Sure. But what I did do was I kind of cut my teeth showing houses uh, to people who wanted to rent right. and not buy. And so I learned kind of what to say, what not to say, how to use the lock boxes, kind of you know communicate with people, figure out what they want, what they need in a home, how they're going to use their home, that kind of stuff. And really just learned how to show homes. Right. And I made my mistakes with $300 commissions and not $3,000 commissions. Right, 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 right. right. So uh, it kind of taught me what I needed to know, gave me the principles, the basics. Um, then I gave it up. I just, you know, completely put that to bed because the real estate side. Really started to kick yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. The sales and, the, you know, so. Yeah. And um, so I drove toward that pretty hard and I got that up and running. And I pretty much promised myself, like, property management's, management's just not for me. Really? Um, however... Now, uh, positioning myself to, you know, potentially, you know, to open my brokerage and, and to do that, I'm looking to how did I start in real estate? What did I do? And how did I, how was I attracted to that right. particular company? And so uh, it wasn't the, the benefit of property management that really attracted me to that company, but it was kind of that that kept me there and kept me going. So I know in my business, I should be able to do very much the same with new uh, aspiring real estate agents who want to learn to grow their business and they can go out and they can work underneath my umbrella and uh, show my properties and other properties as well um, and mess up on their $300 commissions right. and learn how to really crush it on their $3 million commission or exactly. whatever, you know, so get them there. Yeah, so I like that a lot. So in our business, um, you know, obviously we're a very sales focused business as well. And in sales, you know, there's multiple different theories on this, but a few books suggest that you're not going to be at your best until you've ran 100 leads, right? So when you're first starting out, like that's hard to come up with right away. So for you, you were able to like, you were able to grab those rentals and show in those properties to get yourself used to. And I really like that because once you get out there and you make those mistakes, you start to fine tune your process. And like you said, you make those mistakes on, you know, for us, that would be like making a mistake on a repair job versus a full replacement job. So I like that approach. Um, and it's, it's awesome that you're seeing that and willing to make sure that your next team, you know, your team member is going to be empowered in the same way. So let's go back. Let's rewind even before that, because you and I have talked quite a bit. And, um, you know, obviously I'm in the trades industry. I have a, a roofing company, but you have some experience in the construction world as well. And you're very uh, you're a very hands on person. Um, we've talked about that a little bit. So let's talk about like what you did to kind of get yourself into real estate and what that path looked like. Well, um, fresh out of high school, um, I, you know, was already involved with my wife who had a son at the time. Okay. So there wasn't a lot of opportunity to uh, sit around and, and figure things out. It was just basically, let's go to work and get money. You know? Sure. And um, so... Grind time. Yeah, so <laughs> I did. I, I literally just went out, found a construction job. I, um, I worked for a local company making sheds for about two months, and it was literally just like... 
they would pre-cut everything, put part A with the part A slot, part B with part, and you would just nail the two together. And, nice. And call that construction. And I, was, <laughs> I was a wood shop guy all through high school, man, and I was like, this is boring. Man. I was like, this is not going to cut it. Yeah. My buddy said, hey, man, I, I got a job doing pavers. Um, you should come check this out. And so I did, and I started out, you know, $8 an hour, I think it was what I was hired on at. Yeah. Um, by the time I got my first paycheck, I was making 10 just because I hustled. Right. And I grind. And, uh Carrying bricks, pushing shovels, wheelbarrows, loved it, man. Absolutely loved the physical labor of it. Loved being outside, being around the guys. You know, it was kind of my uh, social hour. If you sure, would, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? And I didn't have any money to hang out at the bar, so I kind of got my social time in on the job sites. You yeah. Know? And, uh, you know, just learned it from the bottom up, man. And then before, uh, probably before a year or so, I was uh, crew leader and running that. And um, I left that company after a little while and went and worked for another company and just realized, you know, I'm a self-starter. Yeah. All the things that these guys are enjoying, benefits and all that kind of stuff, I can do for me. Right. And uh, so, went into business um, back in uh, 2005, early 2005, started mm, up. Tough time. Lasting impressions, <laughs> hardscape and design. Actually, it was a great time. Uh, things were rolling. Um, so, started it from scratch, just went in and, and did pavers. And uh, it's funny because I was a wood shop guy, but... I was doing interlock and pavers. Yeah, but it's, I mean, in the, in the finished result, right? Like, yeah. I know that that part of it, you could stand back and be like, damn, that's dope. Yeah. You know what so I mean? So, for you, the same thing. Looking at, at the end of the day, looking back at what I had done throughout that day and what, what my crew had accomplished and, this, you know, how beautiful it was and the, the homeowner's reactions and stuff is really what kept me going. Um, the work is just, I mean, it's just hard work. There's no It is, around. yeah, man. But um, out there just getting it, you know, and so um, 2005, started the business, uh, worked in it for three years, of course, um, I was highly specialized. All I did was interlocking pavers and segmental retaining walls. Um, and we kind of looked down upon like some of the landscaping trades and even kind of heckled uh, competitors who would have their mulching and cutting grass. Sure, you know? doing it all, doing, yeah. Yeah, doing and you know, we, just, our, we were very manly, if you will, and we were very proud that like we don't do mulch. Right. We do hardscaping. Sure. Which was awesome until 2008 when mulch was selling and hardscaping was not. <laughs> yeah. Thirty thousand patio, thirty thousand dollar patios were out, yeah. and just cutting the grass was in. You know what I mean? And so uh, that quickly kind of just stubbed everything, put it to bed. Um, the end of two thousand eight, I went back to work for one of my competitors. Uh, they welcomed me back because they knew I had the knowledge and the experience to do sure. it. I uh, worked with them for about another year, uh, and then I went and helped another man out of um, another guy out of Middletown, kind of establish. Uh, he had done a couple of patios, but he didn't really have too much experience in it, and his guys didn't either. So I helped him establish uh, his hardscaping side, and then helped him grow, help myself grow out of that position into a production manager. Now at this point, we're doing grass cutting, mulching, sure. planting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what I mean, I am the guy who I was yeah, handling yeah. before, uh -huh. but I've grown. I've, you know, I'm expanded my context and, and been able to accept that, and so. I uh, became his production manager, and the guy had a completely w a different style about him. Um, learned, was able to take and learn a lot from him um, in the sense of business. You know, I mean, he was an economics major out of um, nice. out of uh, Delaware, and um, he had a completely different approach to things, and it drove me absolutely crazy. But I was able to kind of take some of what I learned unknowingly from working with him, and then when I left him, I went into real estate and apply that to my real estate business so nice so i want to go back to a couple of things you said one so you know obviously being the business person that you were and then being able to go and work for the competitor you said that was the guy that you previously worked for before that or? was the first guy okay yep. so that kind of goes back to something you and i talk about all the time is the power of those relationships right? right and like people who are out here like burning those bridges remember that like one day you're gonna have to come across that bridge again yeah. <laughs> and you better leave some pieces or something together so yeah. um so that so that part was something that stuck out to me because i do know that about you i think that anybody that you interact with you leave an impression on them that would never like you know allow that bridge to be impacted in any kind of negative way. So that's something that I can definitely like kind of attest to. But then I want to talk about how like when you first started doing the pavers for, you know, those first couple of jobs you were doing, it sounds like to me like you had a sense of ownership o over the project, even if you didn't have a sense of o ownership over the company. You know what I mean? Like, did you, is that, is that how you were successful in it? Like you took ownership of the project, you took ownership of what you did. Um, because I see like a real entrepreneurial spirit in you throughout, you know, all of our conversations. And I usually see that translate back to like 
earlier jobs where you even had that self-employed mentality, even if you weren't self-employed. Yeah, would, would you agree with that? Was that something that helped you kind of grow there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just that pride and integrity in, in your workmanship, you know, I mean, just going back and even when it wasn't my company, working on behalf of other people, um, I always drove to, to be the guy that had the every certification in the field, right? I wanted right. to know the specifics. I wanted to know exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why to do it, and it was all for the benefit of the job. It was to make the best per product possible and to deliver to the homeowners, whether they were my customers or not, directly or indirectly, uh, the best, the highest quality product that you could ever imagine. And you know, to this day, because of that, I've, we live in a tight knit community, obviously. Yeah. So, you know, it's no, um, it's no rare occurrence that you run into people that you've done work for. Sure, and, absolutely. And in my professional career, and just shopping at Walmart, or right? Like that, and uh, I don't ever hesitate to approach somebody and, and remind them, "Hey, I'm that guy that did your project. I remember who you are." And they say all the time, "Man, that that project really enhanced that house. I sold it, and I made tons of money on it. Hopefully, and yeah. Was, and, you know, but never have I worried that man. Uh, that project probably fell apart, and I need to right. find this rack and tell. <laughs> I'd behind the loaves That's of terrible. bread real quick. <laughs> No, it's important because you're right. Like when you're in a service industry like this, you know, we are going to be running into each other at the same grocery store and you Absolutely. want to be able to walk up and shake the hand. It's funny. We've been in the car together riding and you're like, I did a patio on that house and I guarantee you, even though it was like 12 years ago or whatever, you're like, I guarantee I can walk behind that house and it's going to be right back. It's going to be it's perfect right as if I left yeah. it. So yeah. no, that's, that's really, really awesome, man. So it's, um, it's cool though, because like when we're, when you're doing a project like that, it's something to, you've got something to show for it at the end. Like you can say, you know, you can look back at it and have like this huge sense of pride in the completion of the project and, and look at it. Um, I, I know with us, we get really excited about the good looking roof and like the homeowner's not nearly as excited because yeah, right. they can't use it like they will with a patio. Right. Me, I'm like, oh, look at this. Like they're like, I don't care as long as it yeah. keeps me dry. I'm like, no, don't say that. <laughs> Stop, right? Yeah. So, but um, so, uh, so now you're in the real estate world. And so how do you like, how do you fulfill that part of it now that you're in real estate like that that willingness to serve like how do you fill that part of it with the real estate world um when you're listing or showing a house like what is it about the process that's really fulfilling your willingness to serve yeah so i, I just geek out man and i um you know i when i stopped working with the rentals i started knocking doors and the doors I was knocking were expired and um, yeah. basically expired listings. People had already had their house on the market and it didn't work out for one reason or another. And so they, they would expire. Of course, I can get that information through the MLS. I'd go knock on their door directly and introduce myself. And I had to really like hone my, my skills and you know, probably sure. knock 100 doors before I got one yes. Yeah. But, um, you know, and I learned how to take other people's, uh, what other people overlooked in their processes and what they did when they listed the home and figure out what the homeowner truly needed and what the market really wanted. Too, sure. Right? And um, in most instances, I was able to come in and, and make minor, uh, minor, I'm sorry, uh, tweaks to what they had going on there and I was able to get the job done for them. And so today, I'm able to bring forth that knowledge of working with, you know, I, I, I see your house, I understand what it is. And when I make a, a reference to something that I feel like you should or shouldn't do in your home, it's based on experience that I've, that I've taken away from that. And I kind of like, you know, like I said, I kind of geek out about it. I'm like, you know, we can do this. And I know what's going to work and I know what's not going to work. And, right. You know, for the most part. So. so you become the, I mean, you're the expert in that situation, just like yeah. you would have been the expert in that patio and exactly. the design of that and the stability of that and how it needs to be done. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think it's interesting because you, you talk about the the niche that you guys um, took with the the patio company, the interlocking pavers, and you said, what was the other part of it that you guys offered? Walls? Yeah, the walls. Okay, so I think that's extremely important, especially in, this, in the trades industries, is to have like a specific target, like something that you specialize in, because nobody wants the jack of all trades. They right. want the master. They want somebody that can do it and do it better than anybody else, not somebody that's like, oh yeah, I can do that too. Let me read the instructions. Right. You know what I mean? And I'll get this no, in for you. Yeah. 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 So I can see how that would definitely work, uh, especially because in that economy at that time, 
that was a, a, a thriving market. And yeah, so, absolutely. you know, the people that wanted those patios and stuff like that, they want somebody that does patios, not yeah. everything and patios. Correct. So um, so that's that's really interesting because I, I, that's the advice I give to a lot of different um, home improvement companies, like people that are starting out. I'm like, listen, there's something you do that you know you do better than anything else you do. Right. Focus on that. Yeah. Make sure it's profitable, yeah. but focus on that. And in that way, you know, like if you feed this area with the idea that you can do everything you're going to end up doing nothing right but if you feed that hey i'm the i'm a specialist in this like i install like fireplaces yeah. next time somebody says hey you know i'm thinking about adding a fireplace you're gonna be like oh my god you gotta call my guy over here he does fireplaces not everything in a house yes. you know what i mean yeah. so that's where the referrals really especially for our business in the very beginning the referrals came because everybody knew that that's exactly what we did not part of what we did you know what i mean so um that part of it really stood out to me obviously again you know i i know that you have a huge sense of pride but like let's talk about what's next for doug and like you know we've talked about a few of the things that you're implementing but where do you see and especially because of all the different um like twists and turns life throws at us right life has this kind of its own way of steering our lives um where do you see you going next and to expand on that like how has each of your accomplishments um, made you understand like how much more you could accomplish? You know what I mean? Like as as you've climbed, as you've climbed, you you start to see how like how much more you can accomplish. So yeah. expand on that a little bit too. Yeah. So um, you know, as far as how much you can accomplish and that kind of stuff, um, you know, a famous saying is kind of go as far as you can see, and you'll be able to see further. Yes, sir. So um, you know. Coming out, heard that school, before. <laughs> coming out yeah. of high school, you know, I, I was just a guy with, you know, with some wood shop under my belt, you know, but I knew that I was probably capable of whatever, you know what I mean, whatever sure. I really put my mind to. And that's kind of something that, you know, was put forth in our house, too, was like, it doesn't matter what you want. As long as you're willing to work for it, you can go get it. Really? Okay. And that was so, something you believed? Because absolutely. we hear that a lot growing up. Our school teachers are like, you can do anything you put your mind to. No, and my, so, but it was a yeah, really my mom strong belief. truly fed that to us. It was just like, you, you can literally have anything you want. You just have to dope. have the discipline and the work ethic to, to go and actually That's get it. That's dope. You know what I mean? Cool. So, um, and she, you know, that was a constant in our household. So that was a huge benefit to me because I understood that whatever it was I wanted to do, I could do. Yeah. And so at first I kind of just went to work, you know what I mean? I, we had a young child in the house and the, the bills just were coming already. I bought, sure. I graduated at 19 and bought my house when I was 20. Holy so, smokes, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we moved quickly. And, yeah. And, you know, so there was just a, you know, need to get that done. But, you know, each and every accomplishment kind of builds to the next one and so on and so forth. And so um, working in my business um, taught me a lot about what to do and what not to do. I mean, there were, there were mistakes made, no doubt. Um, and there were triumphs as well, you know, alongside of those mistakes. And so... Um, lots, lots of people choose the college course and they go to college and they learn there uh, what to do in a business sense and what not to do and then try to take it and apply it to a, a real world situation. I just kind of did the hard knocks thing and learned as I went and I made the mistakes but then I was able to regain ground and, and get things done and of course, you know, the world just keeps moving, you know, so you yes, can't stop. So when I, even after I put my business to bed, I, uh, my initial business, I knew I'll be back, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, so pushing that into, you know, real estate. Um, I foresee growing my brokerage here in um, Kent County. I'm not really gonna, I'm not trying to be like Keller Williams or anything like that. That's not what I'm after. Uh, I wanna grow my business uh, kind of grassroots and really have great agents who are just ready to sell homes and that's just what they live and breathe to do. Um, and I am passionate about selling real estate, absolutely. But I know that there's people out there that can do it much better than I can. And so my true goal is to find those people, grow those people, coach those people, and help them become the best real estate agents ever while I become the best business owner ever. Gotcha. You know, okay. So for me, it's more about the business than it is the transaction. Right. You know, and it's about the relationships, the long term you know, building relationships in the community and, and really, like I said, that grassroots. Yeah, I like that a lot. Obviously, again, you know, we talked about the power of relationships before a few times and that long-term vision is huge and that's also what is needed to build a business, right? And we we, um, we obviously have to have that long-term vision, but a lot of times the salesperson, the very good salesperson, oftentimes doesn't have that long-term vision. Yeah. 
right. oftentimes they're like, all right, this next sale, that next sale, this right. next sale. And it's all about that sh- like short-term vision to them. So that's why I see a lot of times when it's a great salesperson that goes into a business role or to even a sales management role, it doesn't really translate nearly as well as if they'd have just stayed that rock star salesperson. Usually the business makes out better, they make out better. Um, Cause you know, most of, most of the time the best salesperson is like the most unorganized, like you look at their car, stuff's everywhere. <laughs> like they don't, you know, they don't have the, the best preparation, but you put them in a selling situation and they, and they shut it down. Meanwhile, the best sales manager is gonna be the extremely organized guy and the business owner is gonna be a little bit more organized as well, at least hopefully anyway. Yeah. yeah. Or at least have people around them to help them organize. Yeah. That's so. kind of the phase I'm in. Yeah, exactly. No, but that's cool. And I like the fact that, like, for me, what I see from you is, like, you do it your way, right? And I love that because a lot of times companies are so busy watching what other companies are doing and trying to duplicate and mimic and imitate. And it's like you have just said, okay, this is what our business is going to do. This is what Doug Gallagher is going to do. And you haven't wavered in that, which I like. You're not ignoring what's out there and what you know you have to kind of evolve with, but you're also doing it your way, which I like. Um, so if you could, and so let, let me ask you this, if you could go back to, right, we talked about learning the, the School of Hard Knocks and learning the, the way that you have. Yeah. Definitely a lot of benefits to that, but if you could go back to that guy who graduated high school and say something to him now, what would that be? Going to real estate right away. Right away. Right away. It was it was a great economy then, and uh, I could have jumped right in and uh, crushed it, um, and really built my business um, and survived the market crash. However, that being said, who knows if I'd have actually stuck with it because I was so young and so there was so much more maturity to come uh, that I was a little bit here, a little bit there. I was kind of you know I wasn't so focused uh, on what it was I was going to do long term, and um, it was kind of just pay the bills for now. So. Who knows, it may have actually led the other direction had I done that, so. Hmm, interesting. All right, I like that a lot. I mean, I probably I probably would have done something similar too. Like, I, in the beginning, we talk about like the niche and the special, you know, specialties, yeah. um, specializing in a certain thing. When we first started, we were doing much more. Mm-hmm. And so I think if I could go back, I would have said, hey, listen, stay specific sooner. And that way, I would have seen those benefits. So it's it's, it's interesting though, because, you know, as beautiful as all those patios were, you would you would like to skip that part of it. Well, no, you know, honestly, um, at, at, even as beautiful as all those patios were, as uh, patios were, as easy as it was to buy my first house, I should have kept buying. Yeah. I should have kept buying houses, kept moving up, kept you know. Leaf yeah, frog especially here back there. then too. Yeah, right? I mean, um, you know, it, had I done that, I'd be a completely different investor today, and not right. even have to necessarily talk to you about my work, other than maybe managing properties. Yeah. yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. So it's interesting because for me, I had always had a tough time. People telling me, you know, you need to invest in this, you need to invest in these trades, you need to invest in these stocks and things like that. And I was like, mm, I don't think so, man. I think I'm going to keep my money a little bit closer to me if that's okay and in my control. And so like I really, I heard what people were saying, but I really kind of ignored it because... I just had to be in control of my money. And so for me, I kept investing back into my business. And then when I did make investments, it was in real estate. Again, something I control nice and tight to my business anyway, kind of running parallel like we were talking about earlier. So for me, that's where my investments are. They're in my business, which I can control, and in the real estate, which I can control. But for you, that's one and the same, really, which is kind of cool. So now, I mean, your business is real estate. So how, how do you see... Doug Gallagher advancing and are you planning on owning multiple properties as well and managing them or um, just working uh, on the business and investing in the business? Yeah, no. So um, the name of the game for me is passive income, um, longevity. You know, I want to I want to get to a point where I can retire and um, I don't have a dollar in a 401k. And so, right. um, good for you. For that. Good for you. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'll suggest a book to the people who might be listening here uh, that would be very eye opening to anybody. I don't want to get on any kind of uh, other level, but uh, Robert Kiyosaki is one of my go tos. Um, you know, with the Rich Dad Poor Dad, Dad, the entire um, set is, is great. I really like what he teaches. I think he comes from a place of you know, understanding and also uh, he used these systems to get to where he is. Right. Uh, he wrote a book in 2018 called Fake and it talks a lot about your 401k there. So check that out. Really? But um, that being said, yeah, my business, um, you know, I think it was Chaz Wilson, I first heard say, uh, stay within your 
uh, three foot circle. Yeah. Work within your three foot circle. Basically, if you can reach out and touch it from where you already are, then go ahead and, and go down that path. Where right. you know, don't open a restaurant and you know try to be a musician as well. It's probably not going to work for you. Yeah. Uh, whatever the case, you know. So um, that's kind of the way I do it. And so you know, I knew and understood basically going back if you go back to 2005 what what actually occurred is I went into hardscaping and I bought all this equipment and done all these things and then I looked up and people were crushing it in real estate and I'm like how do I get there these right. people they're dressed nice they're driving nice cars they're not sweating I'm out here their I'm, knuckles I'm aren't Irish, scraped up and, and busted Irish, up man. I'm not, the sun is not friendly <laughs> to me man. the sunburn no problem you know and so uh, I started thinking how do I get there and that's what initiated the real estate thing, uh, and then when I went into real estate, it was to be an investor. It was uh, how do I get my phone to ring with the, the phone call that you know this house is going to come onto the market, and I'm the very first person that gets that call because I right. knew and understood at that point that that's really the investor's tool. Like that's where the investor wants to be on the cutting edge of that. So um, I came into real estate to make my phone ring, and it does. And I get calls that you know this house is coming onto the market, and uh, just this past year. Um, three of those calls came across my desk, one of which I jumped on, one of which I placed in front of my mom and she jumped on, and uh, one of which just never really amounted to much. But uh, ultimately, it works, right? You just kind of set that vision forth and you know what you should be doing or what you want to be doing and you, you get to that. Um, but yeah, I definitely plan on owning a ton of properties. I've got um, a lot of systems in place for a lot of different markets and trends and things like that so I've got stuff that's going to work when the market's up stuff that's going to work when the market's down and my business is for instance my property management business is poised to explode at the next downturn in the market so right now I've built it to a degree where it's self-sustaining and it's it, I don't need to do I don't need to grow I can grow with the systems that I have in place but it's not like I need to I'm mm -hmm. going to continue to grow however uh, at the next downturn when people are being downsized in their jobs and they're being moved to Kansas because that's where the company's going and they have to sell their house in a down market now when they bought it in an up market and maybe they're a little bit upside down and can't quite achieve that, I'm right there. And I've got solutions to your problems. We can go ahead and manage it. I've I like that. I've got a track that. record of you know, making sure that people get paid and that good tenants are placed in their homes. So. I like that a lot. Yeah. So it's funny. You said a couple of things I want to go back to, um, one of which you mentioned Chaz Wilson. So yeah. that will bring up, um, you know, what what we're talking about with the power of the relationships. And I'll get to that in just a second. But you're talking about being relationship, uh, uh, excuse me, not relation, recession proof, right? And yeah. like making sure that you understand when that happens in your business and positioning yourself for that um, so that you can maximize and capitalize on opportunities, which I really love that idea. I think that too many people put themselves in a bad position as far as cash flow goes and then when the opportunities truly present themselves they can't do anything about it because they don't have the cash on hand so i so i like i like what you're talking about there the power of the relationship right so for me relationships have been extremely important chaz says you're only one relationship away from changing your future how have the relationships that you've built within your community played into what you're doing every single day? And then how do you think that plays into keeping yourself recession proof as well? Okay, so, uh, you know, the, the relationships that I've made have really driven me to success within my own business. You know, um, for instance, uh, I did um, a patio for a guy in his backyard when I first started, and um, he happened to be like a pretty heavy decision maker kind of tied in with Dover Downs. You know, so it was just some guy who was, we were just doing some patio and then boom, next thing you know, I'm tied in with Dover Downs. That that exploded my business or my potential for business in that business. And, and the, um, for the hardscaping. Yeah, for hardscaping. Okay. And then moving forward, you know, um, coming into real estate, I was really an introvert when I first uh, entered into the real estate business. I really didn't Yeah, that doesn't work too well. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't care to really communicate very much with people that I didn't have a common interest with already. Right. I'm kind of shy. And then I started going to chamber mixers and different stuff, and I met people just like you. And so I would say, you know, my, my relationship with you has been huge because you're, you're a great inspiration to me. Uh, I love your energy. Uh, I love, you know, most, I love your story. You know, everything about you is just, you had all the, all the things against you. Everything could have gone wrong and you crushed it, right? So 
but having a relationship with you, I've met, bro. Nah, man, listen, I appreciate that. Man, hey, dude. hey, uh, nothing but love, man. But um, you know, having a relationship with you through the business side of things introduced me to other people, you know, that I wouldn't have otherwise known. Uh, for instance, maybe like Jim Olson, you know. Right. I mean, I'd have taken the time to get to know that guy. And, shout out to Jimmy O. Shout out to Jimmy O. <laughs> I mean, I take I take advice when Jim speaks. I, you know, yeah. I, I ask him when I get an opportunity to ask him a question. You know, he dude owns properties. You know, and yeah. he, he does real estate and has the business and everything so you know he there's no no need for me to recreate the wheel right if i can get a quick answer from jim and that's the thing i love about him is that he when he tells you when he gives you advice or you ask him a question it's ben yeah Genuine. he's not he's yep. not thinking about how to you know it's this is the answer that i would give you and it's, it's sincerity you know what, I mean? what's really bizarre about what you just said is everybody who i truly consider extremely successful is exactly like that. Like, I think early on, right, especially when you talk about kind of being introverted, because, yeah. like, you could be intimidated by a certain level of success, easy, right? Yeah. I'm not today, but I, there were definitely times in my life where I certainly was, and now I've got friends that are extremely successful, and I don't even know why they show me the time of day, <laughs> but they do because, like, they don't, they don't have this mindset of scarcity, like they gotta withhold information that right. might help me move up, and that might be a threat to them. Like they don't think that anything that they contribute is a threat because they're contributing. Yeah. And so for those people who want to contribute, it's rewarding for them. You know what I mean? Like obviously we're over here grateful as all hell, but for them they're getting something too. Yeah. And so for like Jim, like you said, like huge shout out to him. But when we talk about the power of relationship, like I would have never known him if I didn't start a softball team with my buddy Eric five years ago. Right. Four years ago? And like, I met this guy on the softball field. Like, for yeah. what? Like, and so now when I look back, I'm like, wait, now I'm doing business with my second baseman from that team. I'm doing business with my shorts. Like, all the time, I'm like, wow, this all came from a softball team that I just did to meet new people and, and network. And so you're right. Like, those, those relationships, like, are extremely powerful. And they always come from, like, the most unlikely of sources. People you never thought were ever going to contribute always are the ones that contribute the most to your life. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So That's like, very true. You know, I, a lot of times I'll go to a chamber mixer and come out of there with no real leads or anything like that. And then I'll go to my son's hockey game and I'll come out of there with, like, three people asking me questions about real estate. And it's not because the, not to discredit the chamber mixer or anything like that. I went, but it's because like I went to the chamber mixer kind of looking for business, you know, yeah. or in a business sense, right? Yeah. And sometimes when you're looking for something, it's not every there, time, yeah. Right. Whereas I go to my my son's hockey game and I talk about hockey and raising children and what school my kids go to, and and I'm a human instead of a business. Right? Yes. And people automatically let their guard down a little bit, and then before you know it, there you are, and you're listing their home or whatever the case. That's so, right. Yeah, 100. Yeah. percent Because those conversations can happen organically now, right? Yeah. And that's kind of like what we talk about with Master Networks all the time is like we want to talk about the relationship we want to allow that part to create itself yeah. and then the other stuff will come yeah. like because when you want to help then you're not out there creating the idea that they might need your services they're going to say hey i might need your services can you tell me a little bit more about your services and now that's the real in that's the real order of contribution now you can actually help somebody who actually needs it versus trying to pitch it to everyone you talk to like we've all been to mixers and seen the people that are walking around the mixer handing out business cards yeah. and i'll shout out we're giving a lot of shout outs today gary larue told me he's like that's not networking that's littering <laughs> so, so, but it's reality i mean who's who's going back through their business cards at the end of the mixer is like oh you know what this guy here really that's a nice card i'm definitely going to do business with them like they're not doing business off of how nice your card is you know what i mean so um and it, t it takes time you know it's uh, a lot of people come into business um realtors especially you know they come in eyes wide open they're ready to go and they, they want to just talk business with everybody and um and i did that very same thing in the beginning you know where i was just like i'm here to do you know this is a chamber mixer this is right this is what we do here yeah and um Man. and in master networks too you know I, I came to master networks for the for the uh revenue stream right looking to, to uh, further expand my you know sure base of people that i know 
and I stay for the relationship. Yeah, that's yeah. Those, I mean, like, some of my closest friends are, are now. Yeah. I never n never met before. I went to a Master Networks meeting. Are some of my closest friends. That's know, right. So. That's right. Yeah, we'll we'll be out hanging out, and then it looks like a daggone Master Networks party, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not. just yeah. us. Yeah. But, but you know, like attracts like, and yep. those people in that room tend to stay in that room if they if they jive or if the culture's right with them themselves and and the, and the group, and so. Uh, it's no no rare coincidence or anything that you would be out at the bar hanging out and actually having just a good time. Yeah, it's almost the same. I mean, without the alcohol or yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of the same thing in a meeting. Plus, like you said, like attracts like. So if we're like we want to talk about business because we want to talk about business, yeah. not because like oh I don't want to talk about work. No, we want to talk about work. Yeah. Like let's yeah, talk about it a little bit. And, and it's yeah. also not I don't need to sell you anything. You know right. What I'm doing. It, same vice versa. You know. Exactly. You know. Now I'm thinking about it, Chris. We've actually had I think this is four master networks members on and i never even made like i never even really made that connection but we've had four guests that are also master networks members as well but again so you know again we talk about like the power of the relationship and all that kind of stuff that's great and again we do go like obviously we go to these chamber mixers we go to these networking groups because obviously we want to build our business but when you get in and you really understand the power of that relationship you stay for that you stay for the training you stay for those kind of things so it's been huge for me like i can single-handed like i can go back and track all that the different things the other thing that i can really always track uh, my success too is moments where like I went above and beyond right the name of the podcast is the extra mile podcast so we always talk about like moments in your you know in your growth in your glow up right where where you went the extra mile to um, you know accomplish a goal or to achieve something that lost that left a long lasting impact on your life so can you talk about a time or an example of how you've gone the extra mile in your business and how that's that's really helped uh, your growth? Yeah. So um, you know, it, we've always met or exceeded all the uh, you know the industry standards, sure, and stuff like sure. that, through all the patios and stuff like that. And that's you know that's all going the extra mile. Um, but you know, um, for instance, uh, you know I've I've sold houses where um, people didn't they. they would have to, or they did have to come to the table with money in order to sell, and I've foregone um, commissions to, to be able to help them. Now, these people are people that uh, maybe they had a couple of different things going on, a couple of different homes that needed to be sold or something like that. So there were going to be other opportunities. But um, just foregoing, you know, a, a commission for one time and knowing that the money's coming on the other end. Sure. Uh, also, you know, um, for instance, in, in property management, uh, a lot of times when I take over a property, it's because there was a an issue. If everything was going great, they probably wouldn't be looking for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, a lot of times I come in and there's there's some issue going on, and these people need something. Um, and a lot of times it's money. You know, it's money's the problem, right? or money becomes the problem because of the lack of uh, management, professionalism, whatever it is on the other side. Maybe they were managing their own property, or the property management that they had just wasn't working whatever the case so there's been times where you know we'll, we'll actually say we'll collect our commissions down the road understanding we just need to get you back up and running you know mm -hmm. um, for instance so putting the money second is usually a, a great example of the extra going the extra mile you know because the customer knows and understands at that point that you, you're truly interested in helping them yeah and, and helping them out of whatever situation they're in and that's what we're here for right? yes that's, that's exactly what I get out of bed to do is to help other people Another good Definitely. example of going the extra mile, um, I hadn't mentioned it yet, but I started the Delaware Real Estate Professional Initiative. That's right, you did, yeah. And, um, you know, 87% of new agents fail. Right. It's flat out. And it's, that's a little bit ridiculous. Is it really that high, 87%? 87%. Holy smokes. And, you know, I mean, you, it comes back to the 80-20 rule, you know, 80% yeah. of the agents doing 20% of the work, so on and so forth. But what it really comes down to a lot of times, too, is the lack of um, help that these guys might receive from maybe their broker or their, maybe they just don't have a mentor. Um, it's very rare that people do have mentors within the real estate community. Um, new agents especially, they're kind of just given the, the work that nobody else wants to do and, and not taught a whole lot because sure. you're probably not going to succeed anyways. So through that, I've been able to, um, what we do is we come in and we just talk openly uh, and communicate openly about issues that we're experiencing within the real estate market, you know, within our own careers. 
within the marketplace, that kind of stuff, and we learn about the statistical data and the, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And so I, I take it upon myself. I'm, I'm the coordinator of this group. So I go in and I pull, you know, mine out the data from the MLS or from the National Association of Real Estate Agents or Realtors or anything like that. And I, I pull it all together and I put it together in a simple, easy format that people can understand. And then I invite people from every brokerage anywhere to come out for free with no commitment and uh, just talk to each other and to myself about their experience in real estate and help them learn, grow, and be better, right? That's dope, Learn, man. grow, and profit. Right? Yeah. So, um, That's dope, you know, man. ultimately, there's, I don't charge them a fee. There's no sign-up. And also, one of the other things that I've experienced in real estate is a lot of times in meetings, we're sold to. You know, we're, it's the lender yep. comes in and talks to us about lending and wants to sell us yep. on him. Yes, sir. And so the rule that I have is there's no selling inside of the room. I don't sell and neither does anybody else. So nobody will ever be sold to. There will never be a pressure situation inside that room. Now, if you get a, credit, a business card from somebody and want to continue the conversation outside of that, sure. fine. Sure, have at it. But, but that's the way it is. Yeah, it's so. almost like going on a vacation, finding out you're going to be sitting through a presentation for timeshares <laughs> and shit like that, right? Like nobody, <laughs> nobody gonna, needs that. Yeah. Nobody needs that. So, no, that's funny. We're actually, um, through our company, we had a, a cruise given to us. And so, like, one of the other sales guys is going on it. And that was what he was afraid of. He's like, wait, are we going to be getting sold to the whole time we're on the cruise? I'm like, no. So, no, that's really cool. I, You know, obviously, masterminding common challenges within your industry is extremely important. And when you have people that can have the mindset of abundance to talk openly without, like, the next realtor hearing the challenge that she may have had or he may have had, like, then you can really make some ground and actually discuss things on a larger scale and like work together like I wish I wish that some of the roofers around here would get together so that we can discuss like like what certain challenges are so we can be a little bit more on the same page and almost help control like where we should be in the market for what we're offering versus Chuck in the truck and tank top Tommy. You know what I mean? So, so I wish that that certain that more industries did exactly what you're doing and had that like mastermind group that was among you know coopetition. Yep. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's it's interesting too because you know it, it's kind of uh, I know for sure that these people sometimes think that they're coming to learn from me, but I'm coming to learn from them. Exactly. You know what I mean? And so. I'm utilizing, you know, they've brought things to my attention throughout this, these meetings where I didn't know something and, I'm, and I let them know. Thank you for bringing that to the table. I honestly didn't know that. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's awesome. So it's funny, you, you brought up something that's kind of stood out to me too, which is, you know, there's a lot of new realtors coming in without the support, like in their brokerages oh, that, so, but what's interesting about that, and I look at that like on the big, in the big picture, like in the macros, like a lot of those people at the top of those brokerages are self-starters, kind of like yourself, like, right. like you and I'm not trying to toot your own horn or, or toot your horn or anything like that, but like, I feel like, bro, I could be like, listen, Doug, you can sell these roofs, you're gonna make this amount of money, go sell some roofs. And you'd be like, all right, I'm gonna go sell some damn roofs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you're gonna find your way through it, you're gonna make sure that you can do it because now it's your responsibility. But a lot of people do need that training and aren't self-starters in that way, whereas I feel like a lot of the times the person at the top was, that's how they got to the top, and as a result of their um, success, they're not offering the training because they didn't need it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so for me, like from the outside looking in to the real estate industry, you've got some exceptions because I see Keller Williams, and Keller Williams has always had, you know, a, a little bit better training or a lot better training than what I've seen from some of the other brokerages. But why do you, I mean, do you think that that's an accurate observation that those people may have not needed as much training and therefore they don't offer it? Well, you know, I, I think a lot of it has to do with um, time. You know, it takes time to train people. Uh, and also, you know, real estate agents are self-employed. Uh, so they're like a 1099, a subcontractor. So it's kind of like your, your competition. You know, I think, I think people come uh, from a, yeah. a scarcity mind frame. Yeah, that's and interesting. Also, you know, in my experience, what, what I have experienced directly, and I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from anybody, you know, in a direct way. I'm just saying what my uh, observation is. Uh, a lot of these brokers are still selling and um, you know so they've got their own careers to worry about and they're kind of the star of the show yeah instance, you know, for instance and so um, and I think a lot of them are available for questions and support yeah, yeah. but I don't think that they're like really pushing the training and like making sure people know what they know right yeah um, they um, it's definitely not them pushing for you know helping yeah. everybody um, 
you know, and there's different levels. I mean, you, you sometimes, you know, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Yeah. So a lot of new agents are out here and they're, they're looking for the best price, right? Who's going to pay mm -hmm. me the most? Right, price, yeah. You know, for, and when I, when I finally close that deal, uh, who's going to give me the best split? Mm -hmm. And ultimately what they're missing is that you have to get that first deal. You have to get that next deal in order to get the split. It's 100% of zero is zero. You know? Yeah. And um, they kind of go past that. But ultimately, my ambition, what I intend to do differently is to not be in direct competition with my agents. I want agents who are just salivating, waiting for the phone to ring, and they just can't wait to go sell another house. And this is what they're good at. And this is, as far as they're concerned, if they never do anything except real estate and get in their life, they're going to just die in peace, you know what I mean? Because they're out there. Those yeah. people are truly out there, right? And, um, you know, I want to be able to, you know, help these people become that. You know, sure. Not just I, you're not just going to walk down the street and go find that. Right. That guy's already successful. You know, you got to you got to grow that from within. So again, I want to be able to train them, get them to that point, give them the tools they need, and then unleash them because, you know, I can sell houses absolutely, but these guys are going to yeah outdo me any day right. of the week. And you want them to? And I exactly yeah exactly. I'm going like to win. That. I'm going to win when they win. You know, what I mean, I'm, I want to be a coach in a sense. You know, what I mean, and so I don't want to be the all star. I don't want to be the coach, you know. Uh, I don't follow football or any of that kind of stuff, but I, but I do know like the Dallas Cowboys are. You know, all my all my buddies that are Cowboys fans are always talking about the guy who owns the team needs to stop like interjecting his personal yes. beliefs and and you know yes. taking so much control of the team and let the team be the team and let man. the coaches do the coaching. It's so funny you bring that up, man. Go ahead. So yeah, so not to get onto football because I definitely am not that guy. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole different. No, I'll, st yeah. I'll steer you but, a different way. But uh, you know, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the Jerry Jones. I think. Is Yep, you know? Jerry Jones, so, my cousin. You know, I want to, I want to just sit on, <laughs> I wanna sit on the sidelines. I want to sit in the press box or, or whatever yeah. the owners' box, whatever they yeah. have there. And I want to, you know, watch my guys just go to work yeah. and, and win Super Bowls. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny, though, because you brought up you're, what you're saying is really important because and I hear it all the time. A lot of people are afraid to train their people because they're like, OK, well, I'm going to train my people and I'm going to make them good. Or it starts with a couple different things. One, like they're like afraid to even hire because they're afraid that the person that beneath them that they're going to hire is not going to care about the business as much as they do. I'm like, well, they're not going to. It's your right. business. Why right. the hell would they care about this as much yeah. as you do? It's your responsibility to get them as close as you possibly can, but they're never going to care about it as much as you do. Now, the other side of that is some of those same people are like, I'm not going to train them a whole lot because if I train them, they're going to go work for somebody else. Right. I'm like, what are you talking about? The only thing worse than, tra than tr uh, training your people and losing them to a competitor is to not train them and keep them. Yeah. And like, lose the job. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. To keep them and not train them at all is a lot worse than training them and losing them to a competitor or them starting their own brokerage or them starting their own business. I mean, that's well, you gotta have the way to go. No one understand. This is this is what I look, the way I look at it is this: that guy who comes in, learns what he needs to learn, and then goes and starts his own business was going to do that anyway. Yep, exactly. He's, he's an entrepreneur. That's, that's his spirit. That's who he is. He or she is. You know what I mean? And so. Kudos to them. That's exactly who I am. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to learn my processes and mm. do what needs to be done. Sell some houses, get to the point, break off, do my own thing. Um, and that's always going to be there. And at least you know when that guy goes out there and competes against you head to head, you're apples to apples. Yeah. You know, there's not. You're not competing with a lesser product. And you know that's what everybody's also so concerned about. But um, you know, the people who want to just sell houses. Are out there as well. Sure. People who I don't want the business. Right. You know? uh, I see. You see. You, I hear it all the time in the rental community. I don't want to own a home. I just want to rent a home. I don't want to have to fix the roof. I don't want to care about the uh, hot water heater. It is and amazing how many people want to rent. I think that's rent. silly. Yeah. But that's my opinion. You know, it's yeah. for them to decide. Correct. And uh, you know, they may be a little more transient in their lifestyle. Maybe not so tied into one community. And in right. five years, they might have a plan to move to San Francisco or something like that. Who am I to interject what's right or wrong for that person? You know what I mean? Yeah. That person's going to move to San Francisco where they bought a house or... Like, That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. You know, it's the yeah. same thing. These people can... That's not going to keep them from going. Yeah. 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 And so the people who want to just be renters are going to be renters. And the people who want to be all-stars and own their own companies and that kind of stuff will be that too. You know? Yeah. So. It's not for me to decide. So I want to ask you this based on what we just talked about, which is like basically the um, – like people today are very inconsistent anyway, right? Like they're all over the place. How – so – and maybe you know this or maybe you don't. Um, like how often is somebody selling or moving 
uh, average. On average. Yeah, seven seven years. Okay, seven years. Yeah. So I think the numbers in um, career and industry are pretty close to that, like where people like will either stay in the same industry for that amount of time and jump career, like maybe even – like it's bigger than just jumping firms. Like people will literally be a school teacher one day and then like six months later they're a realtor or, you know, they're, you know whatever. They're, so like yeah. people are moving that consistently, which means that also – people have admirations outside of like their current lane. So a lot of times when I'm hiring now, like when I'm bringing people in, I want to know like what your, like what's your ultimate goal. A lot of times it's not going to be this. And if that's the case, let's work together towards that so that we're not working against each other at any point. You know what I mean? So I've brought people in that only want to sell roofing and I'm like, great. We'll just have you only selling roofing, and then I'll have other people that come in. They're like, "Listen, I want to sell roofing, but ultimately, I want to do this." I'm like, "Hmm, okay, let's do that." But I don't want you to ever get to a point where you can't sell a roof. Like, if your uncle calls you and wants a roof, sell the roof. You know what I mean? So, like, embracing the ideas of those, especially as now we're dealing with like this younger generation of people that are like really kind of all over the place, entrepreneurial, this trend of, you know, entrepreneurship is really growing. People are like, okay, I want to do this until I do this. And knowing that about your team and the people that you're bringing on, I think is extremely important because you can work with it versus letting it surprise you down the road. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, I'm out of here. I'm going over here. I start to start my own flower shop, you know, or my bookshop or my book library, coffee shop or whatever. You know what I mean? At least then you know like something like that's coming along and you can kind of empower them, work with them, and yeah. you can become part owner of the coffee shop. There you go. There's, like, <laughs> new there, there's a lot to consider, man, especially in in um, you know, in the personnel and in your teams and things like that, because you know, as you grow, your team grows, those people you want them to constantly grow. That was one of the things about Master Networks and, and the training aspect of it that was huge for me is like I didn't have the resources to train my people the way that you're planning on training your people. Um, and so as a result, I would plug them into the different chapters so that they would receive the training that I was receiving every single week. Right. Like we were all getting it, yeah. you know what I mean? And it was consistent across the whole, all the chapters and we were growing as a result of it. Plus we were getting the relationships as well. Yeah, absolutely. So it was huge. It was huge. So, all right, cool, man. Well, listen, we're going to go ahead and get wrapped up here. Extra Mile Podcast, episode number nine, right? So um, if if uh, the people on the other end of that camera want to get in contact with you, what social media platforms, websites, things like that, can they can they get a hold of On The Move Realty or Doug Gallagher himself? Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm not huge into social media. Um, yeah. Bobby talked to me about this <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Yet. Yet. I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah. So I am on Facebook. I do, uh, you know, On The Move Realty has a Facebook page so you can reach out to us there. Um, on The Move Realty, uh, de.com is our website. You can reach us there. You can go there and get a uh, quick um, automated valuation of your home, find out a little bit of information about us, our process. Nice. Uh, and then, you know, we're right downtown. Um, easy to find, 117 West Reed Street. Uh, you can come stop by our office and say hello uh, anytime you'd like. But uh, other than that, we're working on the social media thing. Bob, yes, sir. Bob's going to hold my feet to the fire on that one. Yes, sir. You can catch him. He's on the move, but you can catch him. He's not moving. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. So, uh, so Doug, thanks a lot for being on the show. Um, guys, make sure you uh, tune in. We'll put the links for Doug's uh, social media platforms and his websites up on the screen here. So make sure you reach out to him, contact him there. Otherwise, guys, tune in next time for the Extra Mile Podcast. Thanks, guys.